Hi, I'm Joth Hunt. I'm one of the regional team from Southern Counties Baptist Association and it's my privilege to share with you on this occasion. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share with you. Just recently I uh, went to Scotland. We went to Scotland on holiday and because of some of the complications I actually travelled with my son. We took my, my son's car. It enabled both of us to drive, uh, to share the driving. But what it did mean is that uh, we had to have his music on in the car as we were travelling. Now some of it was okay, others perhaps not so much so. But on one occasion we were listening to a worship playlist that he has. And one of the songs mentioned Joshua and the walls of Jericho. And as I was listening to this song, it had been a while since I kind of reflected on Joshua and, and the people of Israel walking around the walls of Jericho. I was struck by the ridiculousness of the story, the ridiculousness of God's command to the people of Israel to walk around the walls for six days and then on the seventh day to walk around seven times and even to shout at the walls. It just seems so ridiculous, doesn't it? But also the ridiculousness of Joshua's faith to lead the people around the walls of Jericho. So what I wanted to do is to share with you some thoughts around that story uh, as I kind of went back to that story and reflected on it myself. So I'm going to read the story to you uh, and then make a few comments. So I'm reading from Joshua 5 near the end of the chapter from verse 13. Now when Joshua was near Jericho he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked him, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one came out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its kings and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets and when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets have the whole army give a loud shout then the walls of the city will collapse and the army will go up everyone straight in so joshua son of nun called the priests and said to them take up the ark of the covenant of the lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it and he ordered the army, advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. I'm going to end the reading there, but you can obviously read on in chapter 6 to read the rest of the story. But we know it quite well that the walls, of course, of Jericho come down. As I returned to this story, <laughs> I was suddenly reminded that actually the story starts with this encounter with a man from God. So Joshua suddenly is encountered by this person and he asks this question and I suppose it's a natural question. He asks this question, are you for us or are you for the enemies? Are you for us or are you against us? I'm fascinated with that question and I think it is a natural question because so often in our humanity we think of the them and us and we become very polarised very very quickly and of course in the situation that Joshua found himself in of course it made absolutely sense that there was a polarisation there was the Israelites coming in and then there was the enemy in front of them so it seems like a sensible and natural question but what's more fascinating is the answer given by the man. The man says, neither. This man represents God, obviously. We don't know whether he's an angel 
or whether this is God himself or just a representation, a prophet or someone like that. We, we're just not told, but we know that he represents God. And God is neither for us or against us. He's neither for or against Joshua. It's a fascinating answer. And then if you follow that on and see what he says afterwards, he says, I come as the commander of the Lord's army. That must have been a huge challenge to Joshua because Joshua was the commander of the army. Joshua was, was, uh, was, was, was a, a leader. He had been designated by Moses to lead the people forward. He was battle hardened. He, he led them into battle. He was, in all intents and purposes, he was the commander of the Lord's army. So to have someone else suddenly appear and say, I'm the commander of the Lord's army, was an interesting situation for Joshua to find himself in. But I think Joshua gets what God is saying to him, and, and I think this is the point that I'm particularly trying to get to, is that God is saying to Joshua, I'm neither for or against you. What is important is, are you with me? <laughs> are you following the things that I am saying? I am the commander of the Lord's army, and are you with me? We have faced a difficult season and it may feel like, you know, we have crossed the Jordan River of Covid and entering into a new land to some extent, perhaps not quite in the same way as the people of Israel did, but certainly a new day is before us. And I think we can often say to God, God, are you for us or are you against us? Are you doing the things that we want you to do? And sometimes I think that's just the wrong question. Perhaps the right question to be asking at these times is, Lord, what are you about? Because I want to be for you. I want to be following you. And this is what we discover with Joshua, that he recognises God is in this moment. And he falls to his knees and, and he says, yeah, I am your servant. What message have you got for your servant? And that's a great question. That's a better question for us. To come before God and say to God, what message have you got for me? And the reply is this, and it's not actually a message at this point, because the reply is, you're on holy ground. ground. Take your shoes off. When we've come before God sincerely in prayer and we say to him, Lord, what's your plan? What's, what's your purpose? What's your message for us? We come to a place that is holy, a place that we need to recognize that is a place of God and a situation, a circumstance where we need to bow before God and humbly say to him, I'm ready to receive whatever you have to say to me. Joshua did that. And I think we can learn from Joshua. God, speak into our lives. We're in a place that is holy. When you speak, this is a holy moment. I do wonder what our church meetings might look like if we recognize them to be more of a holy place when we gather because that's what they are. It's that place of discerning the mind of Christ, not bringing our own views and saying, we believe God should do this, or we believe God should do that. But actually a place when we want to hear from God. A holy place. A place where we take off our shoes because we're in the presence of God. And God wants to speak to his people. And that is an amazing, mighty, holy moment. I love the way scripture is always clear and wants to emphasize even in the detail of things. And at the beginning of chapter 6 of this story, it clearly states, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. 
What the Bible writers want to make sure we're clear about is that Jericho was a fortress. No one was going to get in and no one was going to get out. There was no sneaky strategy of getting up the walls or under the walls or through a gate somewhere. It was going to be a tough, tough battle. And Joshua, in all his humanity and all his skill and all his experience of battles, had not experienced such a battle as the walls of Jericho. This was something completely new and alien to him. So as they approach Jericho, he's probably thinking, well, how on earth are we going to get into this place? But God knows and understands and God has a plan, but actually God's plan is pretty ridiculous. For many of us, as we face the future, as we face the things ahead, we will come across new things that we have never encountered before. And I think that's going to be true because of COVID partly. But the world that we live in is changing rapidly. And therefore we come across the Jerichos. The Jerichos that have never been before us before. How, how, how have we done this before? How have we, how, have, how have we overcome this obstacle? because we've never seen it before. Well, sometimes as we seek God, some of the things that he may lay on our hearts, the messages that he might give us for us to follow in, in obedience may seem pretty ridiculous because the message to Joshua was as ridiculous as they come, to march around these wars, to do it once for six days, and then on the seventh day to march around seven times. What a crazy idea that must have been. I think there's something actually quite important in the numbers here because we know that seven actually is a very important Jewish number. It's a number that indicates completion. The uh, In seven days God created the world, actually six days God created the world and then he rested, he completed his work on the seventh day. So the man of God is saying to Joshua, here is the plan. And the plan is complete. The plan is full. The plan is of God, the great creator, almighty one, the powerful one, the one who placed this earth in, into, situ, into its situation. The one who created all things. He will do what only God can do. And what you need to do, Joshua, and what we need to do is to understand his call understand his plan, understand his message, and then, however ridiculous it might be, step into the path of following what he has called us to do. The interesting thing I find is that when God gives a kind of ridiculous command, it will require ridiculous faith. And what we discover with Joshua is that Joshua doesn't question whether this is the right strategy. He doesn't question the, the man of God. He, he recognises him to be who he is. Immediately there is deep faith in Joshua. So much so that he goes immediately back to the people of Israel and he prepares them for the first day. He tells them what the instructions are, and then they all go on this journey. Now, I've been a minister for many years, led two churches, and if I suggested that, that this was God's command on us as a people, God's people, I'm not sure how many people in those churches would have gone with me. I think uh, a few might have gone for the first day, maybe a small handful on the second day, but. By the third day, I would be surprised if anyone turned up. Can you just imagine the conversation going on as people walk around the walls and kind of said, has he got this right? Does this make sense? But I am just so impressed that Joshua trusts that God knows what God is doing. And they get up each morning, early in the morning, and they do the journey of obedience, time, time and time and time and time and time again and then they get to the last day and I don't know how large Jericho was 
But to walk around those walls seven times in that day must have been, must have caused some people to wonder what on earth are we doing? But they re remain on task. They remain on what God has called them to do and they complete the task. And at the end, as the trumpets sound, they give a mighty shout and they see the power of God at work in a way that they could never ever imagine and probably would never happen again. What a remarkable, ridiculous story. But within its ridiculousness, in the ridiculousness of the command of God over his people, there is this ridiculous, obedient faith. I, I feel really challenged by that. Because I don't think we're facing Jerichos as such, but we could be facing challenges. And my prayer for myself, but also for you, is that we would be ridiculous in our faith. That we would be consistent, persistent, keeping going and making sure we complete what God has called us to do. However crazy it may seem and however many times we kind of go around thinking, Lord, are you sure? <laughs> that we keep his command in focus and we complete his task as he has completed his task in us and we see the power of God at work. I don't know about you, but it certainly is a lesson for me that I've been learning during this COVID period. Forbearance is the word that I use. Patience is another word that can be used. But that sense of forbearance in faith, keeping my eyes fixed on Jesus, the commander of the army, and doing what Jesus wants me to do and even though it feels like everything is out of control and things aren't happening I will not take my eyes off the path and I'll keep going until he completes whatever God is going to complete in my life but also in the life of the church so let me encourage you however ridiculous the command we are not asking God, are you for us or against us? But we're saying to God, God, we want to be for you. And we recognise that this is a place of holiness where you speak into our lives. And we hold that holiness with great delicacy and care. And Lord, as you speak into our lives, however crazy it may seem, may we be ready to follow in ridiculous faith to see the power of God at work. May the Lord strengthen you, may he go with you, may he direct you and however crazy the path may seem, may you step upon it, trust him and see his might at work in your life and the lives of others. The blessing of God be with you.